This week's episode of Awesome Cast is brought to you by Drobo, the lovely people who will make sure that your data is safe at all times. Go ahead and check it out at awesomecast.com. Click on the Drobo link on the right hand side to learn more. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. Believe me, we're finally recording, and we're <laughs> we're rocking it. We're doing Google Voice tonight, which is new, and I think we're going to do that from now on. To be honest, oh. um, I'm here. I'm Sorg, as usual, down in the studios, down on the couch, chilling. Nice purple couch. Uh, coming at us finally uh, is Rob De La Creta. Hey. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> it's the... I'm good. I just I just discovered that there's a, a ruler on the binding of the IKEA catalog. Okay. And wow. I think that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, obviously you're having a good day. And of course behind the boards, behind the ones and twos is Chachi of Chachi says dot net. How you doing, Chach? He's just waving Hi, for guys. You on the audio feed. Yes. I'm good. <laughs> How are you? Oh, good, good, delicious? good, Chachi. Are you delicious? I'm del- delicious? Yes. Why Why delicious? I don't know. Well, you're always adjusting the camera. It's all over the place. You Sorry. got somebody looking over what your is, shoulder there. I do. What is that? That's What's right happening there? there? Rob? And, uh, and coming at us from uh, from Sideways Land is, uh, <laughs> is Mr. Malengo. <laughs> Hi. What was that? I don't know. It was a gummy bear. It's a gummy bear. I don't know. What's of going course, on the man anymore. behind Mangtoons.com, the wonderful wrestling mayhem show, and unsung intros. And uh, what's your comic again? The CC Squared. Which has a Yay. new one! Yay! Took you long enough. <laughs> Soundtrack, everybody's cheering. <sighs> He's finally joining wow. us again. His very artistic webcam placement. It's art. It's art. <laughs> uh, again, this is the Awesome Cast. This is the show where we talk about awesome things, technology, awesome. and all of that stuff. Um, That's what you're looking for. Yeah. What? I, that's a, you can contact us at contact at awesomecast.com or awesomecast at soybertronmedia.com, whichever one's easier for you. I realize we have both. And you can also call us at 724-258-CAST at 724-252-2278. You can find us at awesomecast.com. You can find us on all of your media outlets. That uh, includes iTunes, Mediafly, the Roku box. I know a lot of you are watching us. Uh, Blip TV, YouTube. And, uh, and we're now on Stitcher, guys. Ooh. Ooh, I don't Ooh, know. Is anybody is. using the Stitcher? No. No? No. Oh, you're going to start. No. <laughs> no, actually, I've been using it uh, the last couple of days, the management podcast. Uh, and it's got most of the stuff I listen to, like the back to work, Twit Network, stuff like that. My only, comp- it's all audio only, as it, as it, you know, whereas Mediafly has a little bit of everything. Uh, but it's a lot more manageable because it was just audio. So if I'm in the car, I want to listen to something. It's, it's you know, nice hey. to not have to fumble around with it. Hey, hey, Sorg. Hey, Rob. How can people get us on Roku? On the Roku? I believe for the Blip TV channel. I don't have a Roku box, but I know somebody's found it. You know what? If you're watching us on the Roku box, call us or email us and tell us how you're doing that. Because we don't doesn't, have one to uh, test. Doesn't but Dabba a, Tech have a Roku? Dabba Tech has one. Um, yeah, I, I believe it's under the Blip TV under the Roku box. So okay. I, I'm pretty sure. Um, but like I said, we don't have any of the tests between like the four of us. So, um, so yeah, uh, let's get into some fan interactions right off the bat. AJ. Uh, wait, AJ we, had a comment from last. <laughs> yes. Hold on, where are we at? We were discussing uh, what hardcore gamers do for computers. Mm. Yes. Yeah, um, Alienware or build their own. And AJ pointed out what I pointed out, and we build our own. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, this is the guy that's done a Hackintosh. So, I mean, he's he's that's definitely one of those guys. Uh, yeah, the hardcore gamers are going to be doing that. As, whereas, like, I'm good with I got a Mac and I'll throw Steam on there if it plays a place. Well, my real question is, like, I know that people still do it, but my question from last week was that if as many people are still doing it, like as many people as when we were, you know, say in junior high. Okay. Are those, uh, is that number of people still doing it or is uh, is the prevalence of like really powerful and convenient to use mobile gaming and consoles um, like 
taking a bigger bite out of that market? That's my question. Like, yes. I know people still do it. I mean, well, I, have, I don't I, think it was always a big market. And as right. far as PC gaming, I think PC gaming changed a lot when you saw, like, The Sims became the big mm-hmm. PC gaming, you know, thing. Or War of Work. I don't think World of Warcraft, and Chachi, you've played it a little bit. Does World of Warcraft require that much hardware? Because it was made, I know they've been updating it, but they was made years ago. It doesn't require that much hardware, mm-hmm. but the more you have, the better it runs. Okay, so, so that's always a thing. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, for, for you to enjoy it, you don't need the highest end so- hardware. Depends on what you're trying to enjoy. And then what else? Are we, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mingo, well, do you have a comment on that? You're a PC guy still, but you're, you're kind of building them for, for something different. Yeah, it, it doesn't really pertain to me because my computer can play just about any game. But you're because, uh, yeah, you're building it for 3D. Yeah. So I mean, so. and that, that probably requires a bit more. Uh, Silent Ninja in the chat room, my brother says he built his own and he still he stills upgrades it once in a while. He keeps up with it. He, he's a guy that keeps up with the gaming. So so that makes sense for him. Funky Dung says he used to build all his own PCs, not for gaming per se. Uh, not anymore. Too much work to keep up with the latest. And that's kind of been my thing too. Back in the day when I was building, back in my day, <laughs> back it, in my it day. was easy. Pentium one, two, three, four. The sockets were easy to keep keep track of. Now I, you know, what what processor is crossed with what the the numbers? They just started like throwing numbers well, after Pentiums. It, it, I no, mean, see, I mean, there's there's also a difference between when you used to do it okay. and when people are doing it now. Mm-hmm. When you used to do it. Um, You had to buy everything separately. You had to buy the chip. You had to buy the board. Yeah. Now, if you buy a chip, (coughs) nine out of ten times, it's coming with a board whether you want it or not. Those have become more prevalent, though. Combo packages are are much more popular than they used to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, nowadays, you'd be hard-pressed to find just a chip or just a board. Okay. I mean, you have to be looking for just one. You have to go on Newegg or Tiger Direct to do it. Right. Okay. Okay, so is it that, so that 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 change up, but really, how upgradable is a chip these days too? I mean, it's how not. far? How, yeah, you're, that's no. not the thing you upgrade to get more performance out of it because you can go what a couple more megahertz and what does the what do you get out of that? <coughs> you know, um, it, it's it's a yeah, it's a whole different game. But I don't know. I, I, I also feel like I mean we've talked about this a lot, but I feel like even the um, the more higher end user, we're becoming because of how fast computers go these days, we're experiencing a bottleneck in the software development side that Mm -hmm. a lot of software just doesn't take advantage of the hardware that we have. So people are developing a uh, a detachment from the hardware. Like, you used to buy a computer and know, like, as a geek or whatever, you would know everything about it, every little detail. You know the clock speed of the memory on your graphics card. Yeah. Now, not really so much. Yeah, but you know, is that a, is that a matter of like you and I, Rob? Like we're more creators these days, you know. You know me with the right. video, you with what you do, um, and so I know you know I t- made a conscious decision. You know, I still build and repair computers. That's how we do the studio down here. Is just these are a bunch of old computers, hence why we probably had the problems we did today. Um, you know that that you know, so that knowledge is still helping me, but. For stuff I want to just do video on and not worry about it, that's why I'm mm-hmm. grabbing an iMac, an iPad, a MacBook. Because I don't have to think about it, and I spend less less time tinkering and more time doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think we've also talked about in the past, like, you know, we used to... I was certainly a hardware hacker. I, I like, you know, over, overclocked things. I built PCs for a living for a while. I, I built custom... Uh, custom design modified PCs for a while with water cooling and painted chassis and all kinds of fancy stupid electronics that did nothing but make your computer cost more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, yep. But I also, like, the the day that I gave up and I bought my first MacBook Pro um, was a few days after the monster power machine that I had, the uh, fitting on the reservoir corroded from the inside <laughs> and pumped cooling fluid into my computer at 80 gallons per hour. Wow, you did that? Yeah, I did that. So uh, (laughs) that was when, and that was at a time where I I was in college. I was working on a project that was massive, like due the next day, and that's when you can't afford to lose things. So at at some point, like when computers become your career, your personal machine, you know, they say, don't make your your project car your daily driver. It's just not a good idea. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. So you, you buy something that just works. So like you said, like we're much more concerned with getting things done than we are with fiddly with our hardware. Okay. So exactly. I certainly have, I mean, at work, I certainly have machines that we know aren't necessarily that dependable, but we use them to test things. And I certainly have a couple of random machines sitting around that aren't that great. But in the end, what do I pick up and take to work every day? It's mm-hmm. my MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. We just kind of moved on from there. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, 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 there's got to be an enthusiast group out, out there. you know. Oh, sure. I mean, there always will. Just like, uh, you know, film will never actually die. There will always be enthusiasts. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious what the like what the market numbers look like. Yeah, yeah, and I don't follow that kind of stuff. I mean, I used to be, I mean, I used to be like I, I subscribed to Maximum PC and all that kind of stuff. And, oh yeah, uh, you yeah. get the free disc with the random demos. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That was, those are good. I still have some Maximum PC sign around here just for nostalgia's sake. And you know, I just set up a workbench so I can take these computers we're moving out of the studio because we're getting a little bit new hardware. And and so I can tinker with them and, and and like that you know that idea like you know maybe I can tinker with one of them and do a streaming audio server for the stuff we're doing you know so I mean that comes in handy but anyways uh back to there's, there's a segue in there there's a segue there's a segue speaking of PC gaming yes do you want to tell us about uh, GameStop GameStop <laughs> <laughs> oh it really is that the big one we're gonna leave? Uh, everybody's had a week week to talk about the other ones um well if i believe I've, I've mentioned on this show i'm not a huge fan of gamestop nobody is we we bought a we bought assassin's mm. creed 2 from them that we found out was previously open sold us for a new price very angry about that so you know i hate blogged about them well they're kind of at it again uh, it seems uh, the new Deus Ex... Not kind of. Kind of? Completely. Not, not, well, they, they never were... changed their ways. They're still doing yes. it. They're still selling yeah. people used products at new prices, which is completely BS. Um, I think I can say that on here. Uh, but what they're doing is the new Deus Ex, Human Resistance, I think is the subtitle of it. Um, there's a coupon. We've talked a lot about on live. And they're doing kind of like, remember when Portal 3, you bought a copy of Portal 3 and they gave you a code and you can get it on PC Steam for uh, when you got for the ps3 uh well square enix is kind of doing the same thing where they're dropping a coupon into the box copy of deus ex for the pc and uh it's gonna redeem for a uh you know a a copy of the same game and on live so you can check out the service Mm -hmm. which i think is pretty cool well it seems that since gamestop uh you know claims they're doing a online steam like download direct download service on their website uh, they saw fit to open these packages, well, inform their employees to open these packages and take the coupon out. And seal back up and sell you at a new price. Um, what do you guys think about this? Well, I mean, it's worth mentioning that um, there is basically, this was, uh, Gary V actually probably has the, the, the best, uh, he did like a five minute video thing about it. Mm-hmm. And he, he had, he put it the best way in, in that, what GameStop did with this is that they made a very smart business move, but they did not make a very smart uh, move as far as developing a relationship with their customer. Because business-wise, what happened was um, whoever was publishing Deus Ex, they released this, sold it to GameStop, and never informed GameStop that they were putting a coupon for a GameStop competitor inside the box. It's something that you need to inform your retailer about. Okay. Um, GameStop, as you know, the seller of that product, has the right to know. So they find out, and then they pull it from the box. But what happened was, you know, this was the smarter thing to do would it be to you know look at this on live thing and, and find a, a much better way to combat it than trying to pull coupons out of the box or pull Deus Ex off the shelf until you reestablish a relationship with your publisher that you feel comfortable with, which obviously did not currently exist. Mm-hmm. Instead, they did exactly, you know, what everybody's upset about. They put their hand in the box, they took the coupon out, sealed it back up, stuck it back on the shelf, which is just kind of shady. And once the consumer finds out, what happened was the exact opposite and the complete worst of anything that could have come of this, OnLive got a ton of free press because of how upset everybody was that uh, GameStop took the coupon out. So, exactly. you know, like Gary Vee said, business moves smart. Absolutely, but for the gamer, not. But did you hear that they're they actually apologized? Did you hear about? Well, there's two things that followed up with this. Um, Well, they apologized. They are sending all the boxes back. I I think to a point they send out that 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 uh, order for their employees, and um, and didn't. 
I'm sorry. Uh, and? and and they didn't do anything. Uh, and also, Square Enix completely thought so, you know thought they were within their right to do what they did. So, yeah. uh, did did you hear about the gift card thing? Oh, the gift card. Yeah, wasn't it? They're sending a fifty dollar gift card. Mm-hmm. If they, you're uh... if you're mad, you're missing it. Plus, you get a a buy two get one free redemption on right. uh, used games. An email Jeez. was sent out to uh, customers and store managers that said, uh, for your inconvenience, we would like to offer you a $50 GameStop gift card and a buy two, get one free pre-owned purchase. We want to earn back your trust and confidence in the GameStop experience. Please bring in this email and your store receipt or order confirmation from GameStop.com and prevent it to a game advisor. So it was definitely a step in the right direction. Yeah. If only yeah. they had that kind of forethought in the first place. <laughs> yeah. A very nice deal. Yeah, that, that isn't a bad deal. But I mean, but still, this this is GameStop has a history of this, and this is just a more high profile, you know, of, of what you see when you go into the store. You know, I mean, these guys are not afraid to open up product and sell it to you as new. I mean, it would, and I even said I, I blogged about this. Uh, it's the one entitled "Stay Out of My Box." Um, <laughs> e- even if it, I don't, I understand them renting uh, these games out to their employees so they know what they're talking about. I think that's a really good step forward, you know, cause you want your, you know, you want them to know to sell the games, of course, but don't put them on the shelf new like that. Put them, put them on, you know, go and put them on pre pre owned cause that's what they are. They're used, you know, you know, you, you really, you're going to trust a GameStop employee, you know, not to put down GameStop employees entirely. Uh, oh, but, no, put them down. Okay. To no. put down GameStop. Especially the ones in Nebraska, um, you know. Uh, that was just low. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we we make fun of Nebraska yeah, for a do. lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But Nebraska doesn't even have GameStop. That's true. To make fun. Not of. even in Lincoln. No. Jeez. Okay. So really, uh, did you check? Pro- no. <laughs> These are completely unfounded facts. Yeah. <laughs> These are unfounded statements. Yes. Just yes. like the Off rest the of the crap we talk about, Nebraska. <laughs> Oh, there's quite a few, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is. Uh, uh, well, listen. For the record, I wouldn't trust a GameStop employee to tell me about a video game, so it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Beyond that, but still, um, it, it just it just shows a general disrespect to their customers just by how they treat the <laughs> how they treat the merchandise. There are uh, twelve GameStops in Nebraska. In the entire state of Nebraska. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, I think there's twelve in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's like 12 yeah. in South Hills. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> wow, yeah, there's at least four in South Hills. That's uh... that's pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> but there you go. GameStop. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks a lot. Good job. Uh, well, I guess the other the other one is um, another big story this week. HP Touchpad is finally yeah. popular enough to be blocked by Yahoo! Yeah, now that it's a hundred. Yeah, bucks. they've made it. We know you've made it now. <laughs> HP Touchpad. That Hulu thinks that you're a problem. Uh, <laughs> so uh, like, wow, I didn't know that they even you know bothered that you could get on Hulu with one of these things. Yeah, and uh, good news if uh, if you missed out on the ninety nine dollar Touchpad that really like made this thing explode, and that's why it's popular now. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be doing one final run of the Touchpad before they <laughs> before they stop An making encore. It. Final run of the touchpad. Yeah, like they crazy be, uh, HP. They are going to manufacture a limited quantity of touchpads prior to October thirty first, when Jeez. the company's fourth fiscal quarter ends. Wow, wow. This is this HP touchpad thing is like it's so odd. It's 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 a peculiar phenomenon in the long run. Is mm-hmm. I, I mean just I, I haven't even seen one yet for as many as that got sold. You, you know anybody that's bought one? Yeah, yeah, you do. Um. The temp at work. The paid, temp at work paid two hundred and fifty dollars for one. Oh, jeez. Oh, was that before the craziness? No, that was during the craziness. That was during the craziness. Okay. He couldn't. Oh, wrong screen. He couldn't uh, find the correct one. Like he couldn't find the ninety nine dollar one, so he ended up buying a thirty two. Oh, I understand. Those came went quick. Yeah, he bought a thirty two um, gig. I forget who it was. I want to. I want to say it was Best Buy or maybe it was actually I think it was Amazon that a lot of people that it went through and uh, like their their order went through and then they ran out of touch pads and it didn't meet the orders. They were sending like gift certificates out, like hundred dollar gift certificates out to these people. So that's pretty cool. Jeez. But uh, yeah, it, it's nuts. I, I I don't know. It, it's 
<laughs> what, what's going to happen to WebOS? I mean, they shot in the... Did they shoot it in the foot, or they unintentionally give it the boost it needed to, to, to be licensed somewhere else? I pose... Oh, that was a question. I pose to the oh, round that table. That was a question. <laughs> I pose to the round table. Question mark. Um... No, I, I, they shot it in the foot. They shot it in the foot. Yeah. It's over. It, this is just a passing fad. By by admitting defeat. This is the great HP touchpad fad of uh, 2011. <laughs> by admitting think. defeat mm-hmm. and sh- and discontinuing it, mm-hmm. they killed it before it even got off the ground. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, they really said we. They really did throw out a vote of no confidence in that and their personal computer industry. By the way, right? I really, I, as a bit now, what do you what do you have in your company? Dell's or HP's? Dell's. You're a Dell company. Yeah. A lot, lot, but I, I gotta think if you're an IT guy and you, you caught that press release, you're like, uh, what's Dell doing? In Dell, the long run, Dell's staying where they are. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I have no. Problem. Well, no. As in, I don't think I want to be with HP when they get sold to somewhere <laughs> else. You know, because they decided to offshoot this. It really seems like this guy came in and just is going to fire sale everything that's not not business because he wants to be IBM. Yeah, and like we talked about last week, the developers who were trying to put WebOS on on the touchpad, like once they saw WebOS run on an iPad, they were like, "Nope, that's it. Yep, we're done. <laughs> done deal. Sorry, we're nope, out. Not doing this nope, anymore. Nope, nope, nope. No more. Exactly. Exactly. Bye-bye. Hey Rob. Hey Rob. Yeah. Why yeah. don't you? T- you know, we got a new affiliate here at the Awesome Cast. Did we? Yeah, so we did this week. Uh, if you go over to awesomecast.com, if you want to support us and just check out some really cool hardware, there's a little link on your side about the Drobo. I got a Drobo. Rob's got a Drobo. You should have a Drobo for backing up your important stuff, especially for you content creators. Mlango, you should, yes. probably, you should probably get a Drobo, sir. Absolutely. I, I looked that up. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob, Rob, I know you are a, a longtime fan of the Drobo. Can you tell the people why they need a Drobo? You need a Drobo because uh, chances are you're the average computer user and you're not backing your crap up. That's that's really why <laughs> you need a Drobo. Uh, so there's two approaches to the Drobo. There is, you know, you're the average person who just needs a place to put your stuff, uh, which means that the kind of stuff you're backing up is probably like family photos. You know, if you have a kid, you're going to have thousands of pictures and videos of your kid. Uh, you're going to store that somewhere. You don't want to print it out because there's going to be an un... un- ungodly number of of uh of pieces of content here and that stuff is really important to you so you want to think well what is the best backup solution i could possibly have well uh i'll run down to staples to get like a western digital something something well uh that's great until that something something has what we would like to call the click of death which uh any hard drive can have a click of death it just it's a side effect no matter how much money you have on a hard drive it can fail at any one time so you always have more than one backup or something like that. Uh, to the same token, say you're a professional. Say you're a guy like uh, Malengo who uh, produces a, an unfathomable amount of terabytes of data, and you need to manage all that, and you also need to make sure you hang on to that because that's your bread and butter. So you also want to take care of all that data, but you've got a lot more of it. So what do you do? You go out and you buy a NAS or something like that, running like a, a RAID 5. Uh, that's cool, except if one of your drives <laughs> fails, you're going to have to go buy another drive that matches the model number and size of the rest of your drives. And that's going to really suck. <laughs> and it's expensive, and it's unreliable, and it's slow. So, folks at Data Robotics, the Drobo, uh, they put together this awesome thing. So, this, this is going to sound like make-believe when I describe it to you. There's, say you get the, uh, the Drobo S. I believe there's, uh, five drive slots. Costs about three hundred dollars empty. Then you pick up a few drives. Don't go out of your way to buy fancy drives. Legitimately nope. buy the cheapest drives you can get exactly. your hands on. Exactly. The special on Newegg.com is what we went with here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna pack that full of drives. Um, I believe the limit on the Drobo S is sixteen terabytes. So you know, Oof. fill to your heart's content. And then let's say uh, one of your drives fails. There's gonna be a little green light next to that drive that turns red. Guess what? Your data is still perfectly fine. And while it's running, while you're accessing data, so let's let's look at both situations here. Let's say Malango is rendering out a 4 gigabyte HD file, and let's say the other guy is editing a a video of its two-year-old in iMovie. The drive can have failed, and you could keep working. Does not matter. While that's, you know, while you're doing your render, hop out to the store, pick yourself up a new drive, pull out the old one, pop in the new one, it'll rebuild itself, heal itself, and all of your data is perfectly, perfectly safe. If you have five drives, 
two of those drives can fail simultaneously, and your data is still perfectly fine. Ooh. Yep. Yep. It's I, like magic. It's I, better than RAID. It's better than any NAS you can get your hands on. And they have small things like the Drobo S for, um, I think, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. Uh, and then yeah. they have the. Uh, they just released a gigantic. It's an ungodly corporate solution. It it's like ten thousand dollars, but it holds such an amazing amount of data. And they have mm. rack mounts and all kinds of fun stuff. Can you address yeah. uh, Funky Dung's uh, statement in the chat room that says the reviews on Amazon are <laughs> wildly mixed? Um, I would say a lot of the situations for uh, wildly mixed reviews, in my experience for Drobo, are people who um, they. You buy a Drobo, you put one drive in the Drobo, and that's what you use it for. Yeah, you're so, not going to... Yeah, that, that kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. And if you, even if you... Honestly, if you buy a Drobo and you put two drives in it, you have a little bit of protection, not a whole lot. But if you have a Drobo, you put like a good number of drives in there, it's all about redundancy. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's software that's included with the Drobo that'll help you manage exactly how much and space you really go. Nice. It's, it's really yeah. nice. It tells you how much is being used for what and what it's doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, exactly. I, I, I picked it up. I actually, I probably will have to get to the point where I need to buy a second one. So all I bought was one of those four. I, I think it's the Drobo S, the, the, the four slot ones. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's getting to the point where like I'm filling it with one and two terabyte drives and I'm still running out of room and three terabyte drives are not quite as cheap, I don't think yet. So, um, so it may be just, I need another, I just have a lot of content, but all of my client stuff goes on there to make sure that's safe. At least, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, losing an episode of this is one thing it's online. At least I can grab it down if I really needed to, but all the client stuff, the unsung episodes, you know, stuff, stuff you get paid for, you got to have it on there. And of course, you know, I have a backup online as well. And it's, how, it's, how does this, how does this work with online backups? Do you uh, think they're still necessary then? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's what, what, what they call three, two, one backup. You got to yep, have a three, two, one. couple copies of it on on location, hopefully different media, and make sure you got one online. Because if your house burns down, there goes your Drobo. Right. Don't matter mm -hmm. how many drives you got in there, it's gone. Don't forget. What is it? Backblaze.com? Backblaze.com. We don't have an affiliate program mm -hmm. with them right now. Uh, uh, but you can check them out. That's what I suggest. <laughs> and I, and they have really cool blogs about people. I thought we still had an affiliate no, I, program I, with them yeah, still. We don't really. I mean, but <laughs> yeah. I could put it back on there if people... I don't... Nobody... I, yeah. You know. But so the the bottom line is that uh, the, the Drobo... F yeah, if Drobo. If you care about your data, get your Drobo. Really, if you care a whole lot about your data, you can certainly take the extra steps of the 3 two, one rule, which, are, which is... Uh, Three copies of any file, two different media types, and at least one copy should be uh, stored off-site. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, do yourself a favor. Buy a Drobo. Exactly. And uh, if they want to buy a Drobo, where should they go, Mike? They should go over to awesomecast.com, click the link. It takes you right over there because uh, we are we are Drobo champions. Drobo champions. That's what they call us. Woo! Yes. Uh, but go over there. If you're going to buy your, uh, your Drobo, make sure you click that link so you can support the awesome casts. And we can get better hardware so we can get our guests on when we schedule them. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> yes. So there you go, Drobo. Uh, Drobo. So let's get back with it. Hey, what happened to Steve Jobs this week, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jobs stepped down as CEO <laughs> yep. this past <laughs> week. <laughs> what are you? No, he's not dead. <laughs> Might as well be. He's not, no, he's not no. dead. He's still chairman of the board if they let him, I think. I, I pretty Realistically, sure they did, you know. he is. So the, the whole rundown is that he is no longer CEO of the company. Exactly. Right. Under Steve Jobs' uh, recommendation is now CEO of Apple. Uh, Steve Jobs is still head chairman, and he still is uh, a huge player in the large decisions being made in Apple. So realistically, if you've been paying attention to everything going on in Apple for the last couple of years with um, Steve's medical conditions and stuff like that, nothing changed because <laughs> Tim Cook has been running the show for two years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he basically has been kind of a figurehead at, at, <laughs> as CEO, huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, they've been, yeah, because he's been in and out. So somebody's been doing all the groundwork. Yep. And, and he's had health problems. He's doing whatever you know he needs to for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, and Tim Cook has a 15 year Apple pedigree. I think I think yeah, we'll be okay. We think he knows what's going on, and that was the 15 good years. So yep, you know this is the iMac year. So I think we can go by. Uh, you know, hey, it's an end of an era because you know he was the guy that brought him back from from you know near death as a company and. 
and yes. brought us multicolored IMAX and 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 unfortunately the G4 Cube and and uh, the lamp, the iPod, the lamp. Uh, no, the lamp. Yeah, the, we had some the friends lamp. that had the lamp. That was interesting. <laughs> um, but and the still, hi-fi, the hi-fi. The hi-fi, yes. the uh, what was didn't they wonder the iPod socks? He was all about those, right? Oh yeah, the iPod, iPod socks. socks. You know, somebody um, said uh, the day that they announced it, I forget um, who said it, but they said it on Twitter uh, that it was funny and kind of amazing that somebody who was the most important thing in personal computer technology in 1979 went out as the most important thing in personal computer technology in 2011. Yep. Yep. Huh. I mean, I think it kind of shows down here. We have uh, how many i devices are around here? There's right. an iMac, and also there. that like think of there how many is. people received the notification that Steve Jobs was stepping down on a device that he helped put to market. <laughs> oh wow, that's that's interesting. That's an interesting way to put it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, well, how did you hear about it? I you know I heard about it. Uh, I heard about it on a podcast, listening to on my iPhone. I heard I, about it uh, via SMS on my iPhone on a plane. Joshy? Twitter. Twitter and on was, your Android. On my Android. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I was just as right. sad. I, I may not be a huge, like, Apple guy, but the guy did great things. Yep. Regardless yeah. of what I use in my personal life, but he, he did amazing things. So, I mean, it's sad that he wants to step down. Yep. I mean, and, and not too sad since he's still going to be around. He's done a lot of cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's done great things. Mm -hmm. So, and he's still, in, on top of staying on the board for Apple, he's still going to be on the board for Disney. So, or Pixar, whichever one he's on. Pixar, so, it's, it's Disney oh, yeah. now. Right. I'm pretty sure he's so, on the board of Disney now. So, I mean, he's not really, all he, all he did was drop a title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And gave it to someone else who deserves it. So. And had been doing, putting yeah. in the work lately, anyways. Yeah. So, I, and this is a guy that really enjoyed, you know, from his sounds of things, really enjoyed what he did. Like, he was, he was a guy that was big on creating, you know, stuff that people could use. Right. You know, and that, you know, a, a simple, com you know, a simple computer, a simple device that everybody could use. And now you see it everywhere. I right. mean, these right. things are popping up for production as well as, uh, as well as, uh, you know, just watching movies on. I mean, they spun the, the whole music industry on its ear. You know, they're kind of doing the same for entertainment. This whole, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I they, hell, they 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 ju rejuvenated the smartphone market that had been, you know, stinking up the joint for how many years with Windows Phone and uh, BlackBerry. Yes, if anything, I, mean, I should on. applaud the man. Yeah, would you have Android <laughs> if there wasn't for an iPhone? Of shopping? course not. No, I'd be no. stuck with BlackBerry. You'd be stuck with BlackBerry, and or you... or I would have left for a phone, exactly. which is something I told you earlier that I I just don't feel the need to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I, I like my phone carrier. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if there's a device on that carrier that I'm okay with and I like and I can use on a daily basis, there's no need for me to leave my phone carrier just because they have a device. Exactly, Malenga. What yeah. are you? What are your thoughts? I know you're an avid iPhone user. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm an iPhone user, but uh, well, no, I kind of agree with you guys. I mean, he's he's done a lot for the industry and for technology, and uh, I I'm more interested in the three years from now talk of where will Apple be because I think a lot of the design and a lot of like the little things were all of his doing. Mm -hmm. So it'll be kind of interesting to see, like you know, after his times kind of passed. Like where Apple goes what and happens, how the product. What happens yeah. to the focus? I mean, is it I? Jonathan Ives is still there. Like a lot of the people responsible for a lot of that, I think, are still there. But yeah, but you got, you got to think. See. When Steve, when Steve Jobs says no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, everybody's like, all right, we'll go back and fix this. And I don't know if they're going to have that same level of. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's all speculation, to be honest. Yeah, and there's yeah. that uh, that anecdote about the um, not the unibody MacBook Pros, but the version before that. If you look on the right and left hand side of the laptop, all of the screws are symmetrical, and that's because they had built the thing and they sat it in front of Steve, and he asked why there weren't screws on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, and little, th little things like that. And there's a story going around I know on the Twit ne Network about uh, uh, the one guy from Google got a call. In the middle of church, uh, and called him back, 
and uh, because the the gradient on the yellow in the Google app on the iPhone wasn't correct. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a that's a pretty good story. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the guy was quirky. He was a quirky nerd, you know. But he is he, something the rest of us quirky nerds could kind of look up to. And he made the uh, the, the black turtleneck so damn cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, I mean, it's it's a staple, right? and and it was a hell of an upgrade from the uh, the bow tie from back in the day. Uh, there's a a story in the chat room that Funky Dunk put in there. Okay. By Nick Schultz, uh, uh, American Review. Okay. And all he does is point out every time it's a national review. I'm sorry. Okay. Com, um, he points out every time that Steve Jobs failed. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. And, I mean, <laughs> no, seriously. It, yeah, I mean, that's what it seems like. Uh, it, it starts off with him saying that uh, it's, it's him stepping down is not surprising, and. Um, that lots of digital ink will be spilled about all the stuff that he did, but it's so, better to focus on his failures mm-hmm. than it is to focus on his successes. But can you give us a couple examples here. Um, the Apple One, Apple okay. Two, mm-hmm. um, Lisa, Lisa. So all the stuff that you know they did wrong. But in all fairness, iPod socks. <laughs> hey. What? No, you can't you can't go wrong with an iPod sock. It's an iPod sock. Come but um on. But I mean and like Funky Dunk puts it, it's it's for a good reason. It points out that he was smart enough to learn from what he did wrong mm-hmm. to become the genius that we all see him as today. Mm-hmm. But I mean Hey. Well, that's what that's kind of the lesson they put out to startups, they put out to entrepreneurs, to to creative types is you know, that whole that whole idea to iterate. You know, uh, Rob, I know you probably hear a lot about this. You know, you iterate, you keep putting stuff up, you ship it. You know, you're going to have a lot of failures, but you you learn from it and your successes Absolutely. are going to beat out all of that. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I know personally, like I've tried a lot of different stuff and I have a lot of stuff that didn't work. You know, yeah, sure. Josh, I mean, you you've know, been there for the some only, of those. The only way so. to uh, to lead is to innovate. And exactly. you're not going to innovate exactly. if you don't make a lot of mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Nobody's perfect. And the people who are successful are less perfect than anybody. Who created the uh, light bulb? Thomas Edison? Yes. How many debatable. mistakes do you think debatable. he had? Debatable. What's that? Debatable? <laughs> debatable? <laughs> the great, oh, I'm sorry. The great light bulb scandal. Yeah. I, I forgot about that. Um, the, yeah, the, well, there, there's a patent <laughs> issue and all that. But, is there, yeah, sure. Go, is, go on. Is this a recent thing? <laughs> or? No, he said that hmm? someone asked, he failed over a thousand times at making a light bulb. Okay. And oh, someone, yeah, yeah. Someone pointed thing. out that... He had failed over a thousand times to make a light bulb. And he said, "No, I didn't fail at a thousand. He did, I didn't fail a thousand times at making a light bulb. I found one thousand ways not to make a light bulb." <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So, nice. And uh, yeah, you can say the same about somebody like Steve Jobs, or like like you know Bill Gates. You know, I mean, it, it, that was the, was the other thing that was uh, uh, thought talk came up. How long has Bill Gates been trying to make the tablet? The go the go to computer, the next right. generation computer, and it took a- Apple's first try to market. You know, granted, to market uh, to to get it right. Now you know, I I believe at Apple headquarters, they have this room, <laughs> soon to be a spaceship. Yeah, they have this room mm-hmm. that's just a wall display of everything they've ever done wrong. So, and when somebody gets something wrong, they rub their nose in it. Right. It's, yeah. it's like, you're like, no. You have to go sit in the room. Go yeah. stand in the corner. Okay. Yes. No, get your chair. Nose to the Lisa. No. <laughs> the entire One. team's names are listed below. Yes. <laughs> here, here lies the work of the great. Yeah. Yeah. No, this idea is terrible. It goes in the room. Mm-hmm. On the wall. <laughs> Oh, hey, remember the last big Apple product that fell flat on its face? What Anybody? was that, Rob? Anybody? Mobile Me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he fired the whole team, remember? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. And what, what can you say for Apple TV? I mean, Apple TV hasn't really taken off. But yeah, he's kind of no, he's kind of came out and strong. said, he, what's that? It's going strong. I mean, I'm still kind of sitting on the idea of buying one. I mean, yeah, sometimes I consider it too. Be like, I just want a little box that I hook up and I got some YouTube and I got some Netflix and I'm good to go, right? Because, yep. I mean, I'm looking at how much I watch on YouTube and Netflix and that's like, it's a pretty good amount, 
you know. So I mean, and, and they would they were right out of the box. He said it was an experiment. So mm-hmm. like he right he said is basically his version of putting the beta tag on Gmail for five years, you know. I mean that and and, then, and you you still kind of have that, you know. And, and they were very honest about hey it didn't work out too well this first version. This is what we did and it's, we hope this is an improvement. And we hope you guys like that, you know. So I think that I, I, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. <laughs> I have, I have this this blog post that uh. I've always wanted to to write about uh, relating uh, Steve Jobs keynotes to, uh, to to some wrestling promotions. I think there's a little interesting one to one there. Uh, maybe that comes soon. See. Maybe. Uh, so, well, speaking of iPhone, and I guess this is a little bit of your dedication to uh, to, to to the Jobs man, Chachi. What about it? Uh, there's a rumor that came out. Of course, we heard about Sprint last week. There's lots of rumors that come out. It looks like uh, the the word is uh, it's going to be like a one. You know, one phone to rule them all. It's going to have all the carrier support, multi. Let's just stop. Let me let me stop you there. But yes, <laughs> let me stop you there. All right, as all right, a, take over. As a fan of Android, okay. Um, but who were we kidding? <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, who were we kidding? Okay, from the day the iPhone came out, it's always been one phone to rule them all. Uh huh. It was just a matter of... Everybody's playing keep-up. Were you willing to move to a carrier for that one phone? Lots of people were. And as I stated earlier, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And now, I might not have to. (laughs) So, are you saying... Are you saying that Android... Android uh, users and and, uh, apologists and all that... And fanboys are really just spiteful iPhone potential users? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say potential users, okay, but they are spiteful towards Apple. They're spiteful, either either they're spiteful because iPhone is not on their carrier, which should change soon. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Right, or they're spiteful just because they don't like the status quo Apple. That's what it stuff. is. That's what so, it is. So okay, okay, but um, Apple's too cool for them. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a few people I know on Twitter that have already stated they won't get the iPhone whenever it comes out on all carriers, mm-hmm. and I do mean all carriers mm-hmm. because shortly after, it looks like it's coming. Yeah, shortly after uh, Sprint r- announced that they would have the iPhone five. Um, but did they announce or is that a rumor? I feel I, like these are all rumors so far. Pretty. Uh, let's see. Uh, Oh wait, there have been there have been stuff about uh, Sprint's been telling employees not to comment on iPhone five. Right. So I know that's well. This story doesn't have the information about the Sprint stuff. Okay. Um, but there is a link for official supporter. So let me bring that up. It's on nine to five max. I don't know how. Yeah, I don't go how reliable it is. But um, yeah. Uh, when the phone comes out in October. Mm. On Sprint, it'll be T-Mobile as well. October. My, my my 3GS is feeling so old right now. So it's oh, I, um, but yeah, I'll get it. Excellent. Really? Excellent. Yeah, I'll get it. I've never had a problem with iPhone. That's the thing. Mm. And you enjoy the iPad. Yeah, I mean, I. The thing I have an issue with, and it's mainly in my nine to five job, is these attorneys going out to buy, a MacBooks and iMacs. For crap they don't need it for. <laughs> like, they're going out to use Apple products. They're going out of their way to use Apple products for word processing and document management. Hmm. That's because Apple did an extremely good job at making it cool to get an Apple product. Right. That's true. We're well, yeah, about- I mean, it also, it also works. Like, you know, if, you're, if your parents have problems using the PC... Buy the Mac; they'll be fine. <laughs> mostly, mostly. Right, mostly. I mean, that's not that's not completely true, but it's pretty true. You can you can still they can still get in trouble. I, I'd I, be I, much. I'd, I'd feel much more content giving a ninety year old woman uh, an Apple product than I would any PC. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Or giving them an iPad or something like that. You know, as long as they can see it. And there's accessibility options on here. If we were giving to some somebody that old, just turn it into a whole different thing. Uh, but then the other thing is, how many people are going to move? Like, I, I don't think so many people are jumping ship from AT and T to Verizon because of the, you know, uh, there are technical limitations. You know, there there's the the multi call 
I'm sorry, the call and data at the same time, stuff like that. Um, yeah. But now, you know, we're seeing T-Mobile could potentially get it. Is this going to mean people will jump ship from it? I guess it doesn't matter because they're buying a T-Mobile. Yeah. But it is, hypothetically, if that doesn't happen, or maybe they're like, oh, let's go with Sprint, you know. Um, or from Verizon to Sprint, because Verizon's just as bad with stuff. Um, well, I mean, here, what does that do? There's two points, all right? It's more convenient mm-hmm. for me to have an iPhone. Yeah, because you're already on T-Mobile. Because everyone I know has an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Which means it's easier. <laughs> which means we can <laughs> iMessage each yes, other. It, it's more convenient <laughs> for me to communicate with my core group of friends. We can FaceTime. Right. With an iPhone than it is with an Android device. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's that. And the whole reason why I don't have an iPhone now is because it wasn't av- it available on my carrier. Exactly. So we're which you're, you're, I you're like. going to get a lot of those. A lot of the yes. people that have been holding out, and I don't want to jump to AT and T, but I'm just saying I think there are a lot of people that have been upset with AT and T for a long time. Will finally be like, okay, I have another network. Let's let's do this. You know, these guys have screwed me for the last time. Let's do this. You know, these ratings are horrible. The, the, their policies are horrible. Let's do this. I, and Sprint and T Mobile are two companies that are at the bottom of the pack, and therefore, and I, I can't speak so much for Sprint, but I believe they're in this boat right now, but I know T-Mobile, have better customer service. Right. I know you've had a tremendous experience with them. I oh, know I if love, I call at and I'm not getting anything out of that. I love T-Mobile's yeah. customer service. But every time I call T-Mobile... Well, you're going to get that. You're going to yeah. get that when you're they're, they're number two, three, four. Right. You know, not for the top two guys. Verizon, right. well, we've talked about how horrible. AJ knows right now how horrible Verizon is. I mean, so much that I don't think he even ordered Fios. You know, that's how bad they are. Um, I love their service. I hate talking to Soul up there because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, they, they've screwed up orders for my home, my business, my home again. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, it's horrible. And if I, I mean, if I had a choice to get five fiber optics from another company, I would jump on it, but still they're better than Comcast. Uh, but, but, you know, but it's another option that people who, I want to say the elitism that want an iPhone, but don't want to deal with the customer service, have this other option with these guys. Right. I've never had a bad experience with T-Mobile's customer service. Mm-hmm. If I call in with a pro- problem, that problem is solved before I get off the phone each mm-hmm. and every time. Mm-hmm. Whether um, when I first got... Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> when I first got the, uh, the G1, mm-hmm. I had an issue with it. I was on the phone for an hour with the, uh, the tech support guy, and we couldn't figure it out on the phone. Or on, yeah, over the phone. So he said, you know what? I'll send you a new one. I'm curious. Okay, wait. So you've had both your, your Android devices replaced at least once? Yeah. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Hardware issues. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, both times I had to replace my 3GS, it was, it was wear and tear or I dropped it in water. Right. So, I mean, it, it didn't fail on me, but. Yeah, that's, the, uh, that's I forget what the problem was with the G1. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was something that. I think it was a screen color issue you were having. No, that was the G2. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, the hinge? I honestly... Hinge? No. No? For what? The G2? G1. The G1, I, I, I feel, don't know. I feel like it was a hinge or something. Anyways. It might have been. I probably dropped it, honestly. Anyways, T-Mobile's but... <laughs> awesome. Uh, Ticketmaster is... <laughs> I love the title. Is, Ticketmaster's interactive uh, seat map brings Facebook stocking to concert venues. Huh. Apparently... Uh, if I'm reading this right, you you can uh, go to Ticketmaster, find your with your Facebook account, find your uh, find find your friends who've already tagged themselves. From there, you can buy tickets next to your <laughs> intended targets. This puts it on Engadget. Wow, uh, that's not creepy at all. No, no, I love the way they put this. <laughs> uh, so I mean, so so I could potentially uh, go on here with all my friends from the Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, to the next raw that comes in town, see where they sat and go sit by them. Also, fans of the Wrestling Mayhem show that may uh, that may stalk us on the voicemail can also find out where I'm at and sit beside me. There we go. It's really hard to see. I brought it up in the chat room. Yeah, right. that's crazy. But yeah. I mean, it shows you right there with the arrow saying that there's two Facebook users in section <laughs> F2. That's crazy. And it puts little flags in each section. I mean, it's kind of cool. 
I mean, that's a. I mean, that's kind of neat because otherwise, if you know, if you want to sit by your friends, you gotta go on yeah, one you credit yeah. card and yeah. you go you call know. your friend and you ask him, "Hey, where are you sitting?" Uh, okay, <laughs> right. yeah, but you're not gonna. What's the chance you're gonna get a seat next to them? You know, yeah, that's this. that's called pre-planning. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly, exactly. So <laughs> this now is you don't craziness. Have to, this, this, this is yeah. Now this is like you know, hey, I got tickets next to you. Ah, well, there, there goes my night because that's the friend I didn't want to. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we always exactly. go negative. I don't know why we're just automatically going negative with this, you know. Well, but, uh, there, there's no good way to look at it. Well, like you know what? Well, if they were in your proper circle, like, that's the other service. Yes. Um, <laughs> there's no good way to look at this. There's no good way to no. look at this. No, there's no positive spin on this for this you. This is stalking. This is stalking. Yes. Yeah. This is stalking I at the Lady Gaga Chachi. concert, or I'm sorry, the Katy Perry concert at the AT and T Center. Ironically, uh, that they have a, an example here. I mean, no, seriously. If you if you think about it, if you're not careful with your Facebook friends, yeah, and you, let's, let's say be honest, let's a lot say of people aren't. yeah, let's say you're a parent, you have a teenage daughter, and she's not careful with her Facebook. Let's friends. say you're I Justine, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're screwed, <laughs> right? I mean, you can't go to the concert. You 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 can't. You're done. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um. Well, that that brings a whole new angle on that. Um, there's, there's no good way to look at this. It's stalking. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think in the in the on the on the Skype guys? You w- would you use this or are you kind of like uh, opt me out? Yeah, no, I'm out. Very, yeah, no, no. <laughs> not a uh, chance. Nope. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. There are people out there that I just don't want them knowing where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're your Facebook friends. That means nothing. There are a lot of people on Facebook that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which yeah. Is, you know, and, and, and that, that kind of like maybe we need to re-eva- reevaluate what a friend on Facebook is. Like, yeah, now when you approve that guy on uh, that you kind of met once at the Comic Con, you know, be like, do do I is he really? friend material on facebook listen is, is, are me, you friend material do i want you sitting next to me at a concert because you can find out where you know let me lay this down for you lay it out lay it out right. chachi lay it there out. are some people that i go to church with that have tried to follow me on facebook <laughs> and i've said no okay okay i have lied to facebook to stop these people from trying to send me friend requests. What'd you, what'd, you, what'd you do? Did you, like, tag them as... Uh... No. No, 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 no. When Now, when you go on Facebook... Yeah. And someone sends you a friend request, and you hit no, it asks you if you know this person in real life. Like, okay. if you've actually met this person. So, I said no. And it says, this person cannot send you friend requests anymore. Hmm. Oh. Oh, wow. So, you can block them now. Yeah. Interesting. Um, as long as they're not your friend, you know, and you can just tell Facebook you've never met the person. What about your neighbors, Chachi? What my about neighbors? your neighbors, like Mister Rogers? I like Mister Rogers. You like Mister Rogers? He can be my what friend. I like, he can yeah. be my neighbor anytime. He can't spell, but yeah, <laughs> he can be my friend. Uh, <laughs> who put this in here? I don't know. It wasn't me. What? What? Robert? It was wasn't probably you. me. Oh, it was, it was Blanca. What's going on with Mister Rogers and Google Plus? Oh, yeah, it was about the whole uh, Google Plus still being angry. They basically said, um, if you're not going to use your real name, don't come to Google+. Plus." <laughs> so I was just sitting there thinking, well, what if your name is Mr. Rogers? Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. We're going to you. There's like... Gotcha. So you think- hey, there's, there's my wife. Say hi. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the internet. She's she hiding. Hides. There she goes away. Hello yeah. again. She, she follows his head. Oh, there, yeah, there she goes. She hides behind his head. It's awesome. She goes... <laughs> but, um, I'm sorry, audio listeners. But no, this has been a problem because there's people that have like a surname, like a, a stage name or something like that. What if, what if a pro? Re- I keep going back to this because it's on top of my head. But what if a pro wrestler or what if Lady Gaga wants to do do it? You know, do a Google Plus page or or uh, you know, I go by you know maybe no, maybe you for can't my, use those arguments because they're they all have aliases that they, they use have aliases for things like this and. Yeah. Well, they have aliases, and or they're they actually <laughs> they're not on there yet. They're not supposed to go right. on because they're like we don't want any huge public figures on. It's okay, the same. Yeah. so let's take it down. Let's take it down a level. What's like 
what about like a local celebrity or what about like, uh, like me like, i'm <laughs> i'm not afraid to use google okay Plus. you're a perfect example <laughs> chachi chachi is not here's a spoiler alert for you guys chachi is not his real name okay right. um you probably saw that on the title oh. um, <laughs> i know malingo malingo is his real name though um yes, sorry i just want to clarify <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, yeah. uh, Chachi Ch- Chachi can't go on and be Chachi on Google Plus. No, you Chachi can't exist on Google Plus. But in all fairness, the people that are adding me on on Google Plus mm-hmm. know my name. Okay, but what if I mean Chachi is sort of your your identity, your online identity, your you know. I how, lost that how, all last year. You lost that all last year. It's finally connected. Well, once once so, I did Chachi so, plays, that all went okay, out the window. Okay, but what if the people are looking for you and don't know you're Anthony Walker? You know, then but, they're not going to find me. I, well, I guess it depends on how you're using Google Plus. Right. Are you using it as a place that people can find you? No, not really. Okay, you're just kind of using it with friends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. People I've actually met. It's not like Twitter where. I don't know half the people I'm following. Okay, we're, and, and in Twitter, you're using you're yeah. using your kind of stage name kind of thing. Stage name. I mean, yeah, it's a stage name now. Yeah. Never thought about that way, did you? No. No. Thank you. <laughs> um, but but still. Anyways. Right. So, yeah. Let's see. What else is there? Oh, that's <laughs> I it. think that's about it that's for it. the news this week, guys. Is there anything else come up you guys want to bring up? No? I no? don't think so. All right, just want to make sure. <laughs> Apparently, I'm a huge dingleberry. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps yes. getting bigger. Yes, this is the kind of stuff that pops up. You can probably see that on the camera. Yes, you can. In our ah, Google Docs. Perfectly. <laughs> I think dingleberry we can say on here. Um, <laughs> Why? It's not wrong or anything. Eh, you know, you know. So, hey, Malengo. Yeah, I mean, like we, we kind of alluded to, you you're you're doing stuff with your comic again. No, I'm he's very not. excited. It took yeah. him forever. Yeah, <laughs> you don't seem too <laughs> excited about it. No, uh, no, I'm 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 pretty excited. There's uh yeah, we revamped it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm probably going to be changing some things, but uh, I started posting up again today. So mm-hmm. now, how many good. comics do you actually have stockpiled right now to be posted? I do have, yeah, I do have stockpiled stuff, <laughs> but, uh, Oops. Oops. there's, there's a lot of stuff that <laughs> we'll, we'll, just, okay, we'll cut to the chase. I'm a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> so you are no Steve Jobs. I am not a Steve Jobs. So I have a lot of content that just needs to be uh, completed, but yeah, the comic strip is going and I'm probably going to be trying to do some other stuff. To get, uh, like single panel stuff for Comic Cons and other things that are coming up. Okay. So, uh, but yeah. So check it out. It's, yeah. It's, and, and you'll be over at Pod Camp, right? I will be at Pod Camp. All right. So, uh, you that'll be cool. A, you doing a session? I will probably not do a session this year because okay. I am not where I want it to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 so, you so don't want and, to, and there's already been a comic strip session. Okay. So, it's no point so you don't want to be, that. you don't want to do a don'ts uh, session or anything like the, that. The don'ts. <laughs> of, <laughs> yeah. Oh. Let's just fill me for about a week, and there, there you go. There you go. That, that's there your you session. Excellent. Where can but, people find your your all your plethora of comics that are be coming up? Uh, you can go to the cc squared dot com, mm-hmm. and you will find everything there. Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, Chachi, you got a new episode of Unsung up this week. Yes. There yes, is. you do. And, pod uh, camp. About Pod Camp. About Pod Camp. About Pod Camp. Pod Camp. Pod Camp. Pod camp. We'll be bringing back but, Chachi Says, the bitch. vidcast this week. Yes. Uh, after your week of hiatus. Yes. That happens. Sometimes I just need a break. Sometimes. Sometimes. So. Um, anything else going on? You got, actually, your blog. You, you just did Doom? Yeah, I just did. It's game number. And I, I want to apologize. I did not realize what Uniracers were when you were asking me about it. I read your post, and I and I feel so bad for you for having to play that game. Oh man, that game was terrible <laughs> for the Super Nintendo. It yeah, was the first game that in this rough. journey so far that I've given a one. Although I didn't know about that, it was discontinued wow. because Pixar sued them. Yeah, because it resembled somebody one of uh, uh, 1987. Pixar did a short film that its main character was a unicycle. Mm-hmm. Oh. And um, the uni- the unicycles in Uniracer, it really do resemble uh, the one in Pixar's film. 
They're so, probably like, ah, Pixar is a little company. Nobody's going to know what this is. Oops. <laughs> um, the, the company's uh, response... D- DMA. Yeah, DMA's response to that uh, lawsuit was, oh, so they're the only people who can use unicycles? Yeah, really, how do you characterize unicycles? They should have tried harder. Should try harder. <laughs> their their job is to create. Yeah, that's they should have been creative. That's true. Rob, you also made an appoint- appearance on Unsung this week. Hi, Rob. I did. Are you happy with your representation? Uh, I'm pretty happy. I was I was kind of surprised at some of the things that came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you hear? The things that I didn't use. <laughs> yeah, those are, those are the best part. I was kind of it was uncut, and I was like, oh, this could be. Oh yeah, awesome. the uncut. Yeah, the, the uncut is maybe a little bit of a misnomer for your interview. Yeah, I, I, uh, I so. yeah. You get you know you get a, a camera in front of Rob, and uh, he tells you everything he thinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need a camera; just ask me. Well, that's true. Just like say, "Hey, Rob." <laughs> 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 what do you think about people who don't simplify vector logos for printing? Oh. <laughs> There's that too. There's that too. I mean, just tune in before the show to figure out, to find out stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Rob, Rob, you're yeah. at robjdlc.com. Yeah, robjdlc.com, yeah. twitter.com slash robjdlc. Uh, what else we got? Shens.robjdlc.com is my Tumblr. Facebook.com slash robjdlc. And I'm hidden somewhere inside of Google Plus if you can spell my last name. <laughs> well, I can. Well, if they're on video. Um, I can. Yes. Yeah, or you yes. can just read it from the thing here. Hey, uh, there's that PodCamp thing, too. PodCamp. Yeah, we're getting to that. Hey, you know what? I was actually watching back to your session the uh the you're doing it wrong uh yeah. and, and that that is still an entertaining watch uh through i'm glad and <laughs> that's over hey, at look. podcamppittsburgh.com so much going on there guys we're sponsoring it here at sorgatron media uh that's podcamp pittsburgh three chachi but that's okay I found there's the pen pens in the there, drawer. there will be pens there's, there's podcamp pens <laughs> everywhere pens. there's there's and leftover everywhere. swag over there I mean, there's, and, there's all kinds of stuff and 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 we are going to be doing a little thing with uh the folks at sticker giant if you want to pay attention to the podcamp pittsburgh blog in the next few days we're going to be giving away from some some sticker jobs some sticker Ooh, jobs really <laughs> stickers <laughs> printed and stuff yeah nice. that sounds kind of dirty I'm excited about sticker, sticker jobs. jobs. And we'll also be doing a... We're going to be doing this, guys. This whole thing. No, we're not. We're oh, yeah. going to be this... No, we're not. ...at this. Pod Camp. No, at we're pod not. This at Pod this. Camp. Wait. This Camp Pod. At... At thing. it this. where is who hey, camp. question for you. Yes. Do I have to do all of this at Pod Camp, No, too? no. I'll handle that part. Are you sure? Uh, <laughs> I think... Do you want to? I'm not... I don't know. We're figuring out the tech side of it, but... I don't know, baby. We'll, we will let you do it live. I'll only watch the, the show if Chach is doing it. See that? There you go. There's one. There's Sucks one. So attend that. We uh, you can check out the episode <laughs> we had last year. Um, episode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was from about a year ago. Look up uh, September of last year. Maybe I'll put the number up here somewhere. Yeah. It's the one where it doesn't look like we're in a studio. Right. The, the second one where it doesn't look like the third one where it doesn't look like we're in a studio. I realize we did three on locations now. Um, we haven't done one for a while. No. Man, we gotta get back yeah. into that. Eh. I missed that. Thing. We never did that. I missed that. Yeah, it didn't. Well, the thing. Yeah, it well, kind of stopped. There's reasons. We did there a few, reasons. and then it kind of stopped because uh, locations don't like people doing stuff like this in their locations. No, no, it, it, it's weird. <laughs> you know, if you want the awesome cast to come to your location, you know yeah. where they could contact us, ch- us, Chach? Contact at awesomecast.com or uh, awesomecast.sorgatronmedia.com, yep. or you can give us a call and tell us just how awesome it would be to yes. have us in your location at seven two four two five a cast seven two four two five two 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 seven eight. You know uh, what? For a nominal fee, yes, we'll 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 record this in their living room, maybe for free. Uh-huh. Uh, no, not, no, 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 oh, not oh. for free. That, we need money. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Watch the show. Tell your friends, please. <laughs> Available on iTunes, MediaFly, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and now Stitcher.com, and your little app on your iPhone and we all that need jazz. Money. We need people to watch the show, too. <laughs> right. So, so tell can... all your friends. Tell them how awesome the awesome cast is. <laughs> leave comments. Leave stars. Leave stars. Leave ratings. Leave stars. Ratings. Leave ratings. Ratings. Stars. Ratings. Hi. Uh, I'm Sorg from the Awesome Cast on the Awesome Cast awesome and the Awesome cast. Chat Room. You've been an awesome audience. See you guys next week.